Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about applying some of these inference methods to categorical data. Right? Specifically when our population proportion is our parameter of interest. Right? We're using these ideas of inference, using a sample to figure something out about the population that it came from. We know point estimation is the easiest way of doing this. Confidence intervals build off those point estimates. And then hypothesis tests, that's where we're saying we think we know what the value of this parameter is. Does our data support or refute that? All right, so we're working our way down this list. And we are right here. We're, if we have categorical data, we know about the sampling distribution of p hat. Right, so we're using p hat to try to estimate p, just like you might use x bar to estimate mu or any of these other statistics to estimate a parameter of interest. So now we're thinking what if our parameter of interest is p? We want to apply these ideas of confidence intervals hypothesis tests to that. Okay, so let's just kind of remind ourselves what p hat is, how we calculate it. Right, well, it's when we have some sort of categorical data where I can't necessarily calculate the mean or the standard deviation of it or something like that, right? But I can count how many occurrences I have of a specific characteristic I'm interested in, divide by the total, that gives me my sample proportion, right? And that should be a good estimate of P. Now it also has ties back to the binomial, right? We know that this X technically has a binomial distribution right, that, that follows that a lot of the things we we know about the binomial will will also apply here right especially we need to be thinking about that normal approximation to the binomial all right so what are the conditions we need to check so when we're thinking back to whether our central limit theorem here checks right we needed a simple random sample and we needed a large sample size, but here it doesn't just depend on our sample size, right? Our our value of p needs to be reasonable too. Okay, so n times p greater than 10, n times 1 minus p greater than 10. Some some textbooks, some resources use 5 there. All right, we also technically need independence of each observation, right? That goes back to our binomial conditions. Each individual trial needs to be independent. All right, and technically these these things work only work well if we have a very large population that we're sampling from. All right, so we know if all of those check out, our central limit theorem for proportion says, right, if I can meet all those criteria, then the sampling distribution, of p hat, sampling distribution of p hat should be relatively normal, centered at p. Right, p is a parameter of interest, so it's accurate with the standard error of this quantity. All right, so theoretically, should look like that when we meet our criteria. Okay, so when we're trying to apply these ideas to confidence intervals and hypothesis tests, it should be pretty easy. We can kind of follow a lot of the same logic that we have before, except we need to think about this standard error. So let's take a, a more in-depth look at what this standard error is, right, and, and kind of where it comes from too, right, because we know if x is binomial, the standard deviation of a binomial, right, is square root in p 1 minus p, okay, we know p hat, right, that's x over n, where x is binomial. Okay, so think about dividing this by n. So simplify that, see what you get. All right, but we kind of have an issue here because remember our goal. We're trying to use p hat as a point estimate of p. We're using p hat to figure out p. Now p is in the standard error formula here, but do we know p? No. So p is in this formula that we're using to estimate itself. All right, so that's kind of an issue there. So, because in real life, we're, we're not going to know what P is, but we have a good estimate of P, P hat. 
Okay, so when we're trying to estimate p with p hat, rather than using p in that standard error, we substitute in the next best thing, we substitute in the best estimate that we know of p, p hat. So now that we know, and notice this isn't going to be the exact standard error of that sampling distribution, it's just an estimated standard error. Okay, so using that to build our confidence interval, we know what the general format should be. Point estimate plus or minus margin of error, where that margin of error is made up of critical value times the standard error. Looks like that. If in this case our central limit theorem holds, well, if the central limit theorem holds, we should be working with this distribution. So I can use all of those pieces to plug into my formula. I'm going to get z critical value because it's normal. Standard error goes here. My point estimate is p hat. Boom, there we go. There is our confidence interval for me. All right. Now remember, when we're thinking about these inference methods, so now we've, we've talked about confidence intervals there, then um, you know it, make, it makes sense there. Confidence intervals are usually pretty easy to derive and set up. Okay, we know a confidence interval is useful to us when we're trying to estimate the value of a parameter. We have no idea what that parameter is, so we want to estimate it with a range of plausible values. That's the idea of a confidence interval. Right? But a hypothesis test answers a completely different question. Right? This is when we think we actually know what that parameter is. We want to see, does, does the sample data that we take, does it support that claim, or does it maybe refute that claim? Okay, so both of these, confidence intervals and hypothesis tests, Right? They come with a different set of assumptions. All right? We handled, so since they come with a different set of assumptions, we're going to handle this standard error problem differently. Right? Remember our standard error problem. In the case of a confidence interval, we had no idea what p is, so we estimated it with p hat. Right? So we said, okay, p hat's my best estimate of p. So I'm going to plug it in there. But remember, that was for a confidence interval. What about for a hypothesis test? What are our assumptions here? Well, the main assumption in a hypothesis test, the main assumption is that the null is true. We have to assume that from the beginning. OK, so our null hypothesis in a hypothesis test for P, the null will be that H naught, the parameter is equal to some claimed value, P naught. All right, so theoretically, if we're assuming this is true, we know its distribution should look like this. So rather than plugging in P hat in the standard error, we're assuming that p naught is the true value of p. So we plug in p naught in our standard error. All right. So we know a test statistic should look like this. Whatever we observed minus the null over the standard error, we now know what to plug in for our standard error. All right. We'll be observing values of p hat minus the null p naught over our standard error. All right. Now, thinking back to our binomial approximation, oftentimes, so this is this is one way to write the test statistic for a, a hypothesis test for proportion. And I think I think writing it this way makes more intuitive sense when we're thinking about the basic structure of a test statistic. All right, but a little bit easier way of doing this computationally is kind of using this z-score formula here that goes back to the binomial approximation. So if you remember the binomial approximation, sorry, it's hard to write a lot of letters with this. But if you go back to thinking about the binomial approximation, remember your z-score? It was whatever value of x minus the binomial mean np over the binomial standard deviation. That is this form. Okay, if you try both of these test statistics, try them out, they'll give you the same answer. Okay, so some, some places you'll see it written like this. Some places you'll see this test statistic written like this. Give you the exact same answer. 
All right, so one more time, I just want to think about the difference in standard errors here. Okay, so we, we know we have a problem that P is included in its own standard error. P is included in the standard error for the sampling distribution of P hat. We handled that problem differently for confidence intervals versus hypothesis tests, right? And we handled it differently because of the question that a confidence interval is trying to answer versus the question a hypothesis test is trying to answer, right? A confidence interval, we're trying to use P hat to estimate P, right? So P hat is our best guess at what P is. But in a hypothesis test, we're assuming H naught P is equal to P naught, or that claimed value. So P naught is now what our best estimate is. So I use that in the standard error. Okay, so, so I think everything here should be pretty intuitive. If you feel confident about the basic setup of confidence intervals and hypothesis tests, remember the steps to our hypothesis test is always going to be the same. The basic setup of a confidence interval is always going to be the same. So hopefully you feel pretty good about that, but the big difference here when we're doing inference for P is what's going on in these standard errors. All right, thanks for your time, and we will see you next time.